Now we all know about ransomware for Windows, but what about Linux? Is Linux immune to such malware? Absolutely not. On the desktop, we have two ransomware variants that are very common on Linux. One is KillDisk and the other is RansomX, the latter being known for a lot of high-level state and government attacks. Now in a moment, I'm just gonna run one of these and you'll see what it does to the system. Absolutely nukes it, so it's gonna be fun. But it's important to realize that uh, most modern malware, especially those that are like high-profile, high-impact, are multi platform. They don't care whether you're on Linux, whether you're on Windows, they are going to detonate regardless. And it's because modern malware is not about sneaking in some application through a back door onto your computer as a Trojan. It's more about hacking, getting access to your computer. And once someone has access to your computer, they can do the encryption regardless of um, what operating system you're using. So I'm going to show in a moment how this works. So first I'm going to go into properties, just make sure we have the ability to execute this because Linux does have permissions. So slightly more restrictive than Windows in that sense. But now if we go ahead and do dot dash kill disk dot elf, elf is basically the Linux version of a Windows EXE. It's a binary format. And now we should be able to run it. Just gonna provide my password and boom, that's done. Now it's gonna take a while, but within moments we should see some impact on the system. I don't wanna give away too much because I want you to see for yourself what kill disk is. Now a terminal has stopped flashing. So a little sign there that things may not be going well on the system. So far, I don't see any changes to our files, but um, that's going to change in a moment. I do hear the fans ramping up in the background. So it is doing what it's doing. While that's happening, I just wanna reiterate, malware today is not so much about how it gets on your system unless you're talking about info stealers that are being spread in like Fortnite games or counter-strike cheats or whatever most high profile malware is really delivered by the hackers personally on your computer so the operating system doesn't really matter they're going to pick a tool if they're choosing to accomplish the goals that they have so they do definitely have malware for linux and most major ransomware that you see on windows like lockbit also has variants for linux they work on vmware esxi servers for example so so this is by no means a platform that's immune to cyber threats, especially not ransomware. Now, as you can see, our system has frozen up already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the system and then you'll see the effects of the ransomware. So quick reset here. And boom, we are greeted upon login with this wonderful window. We are sorry, but the encryption of your data has been successfully completed. So you can lose your data or pay 222 BTC to this address. Last I checked, that's like $100,000 or they have a contact email. So this is typical ransomware encryption notice. The same as what you would see on Windows, similar to what you'd see with malware like uh, Petya or GoldenEye that kind of erases the master boot record. This does something similar for Linux. And yeah, our system is completely kill. Like like I cannot do anything. If I hit this enter button, if I just spam it, the page just refreshes. It's not going to load. It's not even going to boot. There is no Linux anymore. There's no nothing. So those are the devastating effects of Kill Desk ransomware on Linux. Now, funnily enough, if we do a search for RansomX on the dark web, the first result is Linux.encoder RansomX. And it's got text in uh, Russian. And this is sent in a chat room called Dark Moon Chat on Telegram. Couldn't have made it up better myself. But here's some more info about these threats. So RansomX famously attack the Brazilian government and the Texas Department of Transportation. It's a 64-bit C-based ELF binary, so it's compiled in GCC. C, of course, is a very old popular programming language. And again, there's just no massive difference between the kind of ransomware binaries that are used on Linux versus Windows. Sure, they might have slightly different things in terms of ransomware on Windows using commands like uh, delete shadow copies to get rid of backups. The procedures may be different for Linux, but they still do a lot of the same things. They, in fact, network, steal credentials, move laterally across to different computers on the network and encrypt the data. RansomX uses a 256-bit key to encrypt files and each sample includes the target organization's hard-coded name. So it is a very targeted attack and I'm guessing the price is going to depend on the target. Tycoon, another popular malware that hits multiple platforms. It has a Java component. Erebus, also malware that's very popular on Linux. Started with Windows but since then attacked a a lot of Linux servers and it scans the networks for over 400 types of files including databases archives and documents so if you have a file server you have like large databases the ransomware would basically make all of that inoperable just encrypt everything and then your server your databases everything's gone provides ransom note in multiple languages so you know they target different countries but yeah if we keep scrolling through our search here you can see that uh, we have multiple mentions of ransom X in various 
forums. We've got one in some kind of Russian forum where it's mentioned along with the likes of Conti, Egregor. Now, I don't read Russian, so I can't tell you what it says, but uh, usually it comes hand in hand with Cyberchrome Knows and Ransomware. Now, I do want to thank Flare, the sponsor of this video, for giving us access to their platform. I can look specifically for ransom leaks in all of this, so I can tell if um, a particular ransomware is hitting certain corporations. So as you can see, we've got um, different companies listed here that have all been affected by RansomX, and um, they've got a leak associated with it. I'm going to have to blur out the company names, but it's a long list, as you can see. So ransomware for Linux is very much a thing. Linux as an operating system is used massively in organizations, in servers, and so there's no reason that cyber criminals won't target it, that ransomware is not going to encrypt stuff on Linux. So it's definitely a myth that malware for Linux doesn't exist or is not as effective as Windows malware. Because as you can see, we've got a long list of things that have been affected by RansomX and many of them would be Linux platforms. So I hope you found this video informative. Hope you loved the little demo of Kill Disk. Please do like and share the video if you enjoyed it. And check out Flare if you're interested in exploring the dark web for yourself. What we're doing here is a global search but you can manually look for specific things affecting you by typing in your own email address or website. So let's say I type in the pcsecuritychannel.com and do a search, then it's going to find stuff that's relevant to us. Thankfully, we're not in any ransom leaks, but uh, you can also look for mentions in various things like GitHub, Pastebin. It's just a very broad way to look for information across the web, the dark web, to see if anything affects you. Thankfully for me, it's just people talking about my videos, but you can see if your email's been exposed and as a company you can monitor it for all your assets and your critical infrastructure your employee emails so if that data is out on the dark web you can pick up on it and take action before the cyber criminals do once again there is going to be a special link in the description so do use that to check out this search if you're interested and of course thank you all so much for watching this is leo and as always stay informed stay secure